Hello and welcome back to this lesson on maps. Maps do require slightly different language to describe them effectively. However, we're still going to follow the same writing process. And here is the question we're going to take a look at. It reads, the maps below show the village of Stokeford in 1930 and 2010. There we can see the two maps. This is a common IELTS question uh, where you have a map, uh, two maps from two different years from the past and you have to describe the changes between the two. Um, the other type of question is where one map is now and the second map is in the future. So uh, it's basically different tenses that you need for the two different types of maps questions. We'll take a look at both of those types. This, of course, is a past tense um, maps question, as both of the maps are um, in from the past, 1930 and 2010. Um, so we need to pick out the key features from these maps as we would normally do for any other type of visual data. We can see the, the central river running up and down. That's the same in both. So is the main road and bridge. Um, the biggest change that I immediately comes to my mind is the number of houses. That to me is the most obvious change between the two. So I'm gonna have that as one of my key features. And also along with the number of roads. So it's the roads and the houses that are immediately noticeable. Um, so I'm gonna select that as a key feature. Um, the second thing I'm gonna select is the large house. Um, and how that's been converted. Um, notice there are two extra buildings on it and it's been changed into a retirement home and the gardens have also been built on. So that's quite a major change. Um, the primary school has also been extended at the back of the property and much of this has been done on farmland. So there's a big reduction in the amount of farmland. So those are the four changes that um, are most obvious to me uh, that come to mind when I look at this map. So we are looking for the most obvious things. There are other things um, that we perhaps could mention. Um, uh, the, the tree, for example, on the gardens has been taken away, um, but that is not one of the major changes between the maps. So when you're picking out the key features, look for the most obvious things, which we can then include in our overview paragraph. As ever, I'm going to use synonyms to uh, rephrase the opening statements in the question. And this time it now reads, the map uh, the maps illustrate the settlement of Stokeford in 1930 and 2010, revealing what has changed and what has remained the same. So using the phrase, the maps illustrate, is quite a nice way to open a maps question. Um, and notice I've used the word settlement rather than village, just to show off a range of vocabulary. And I've also added... Um, what the maps are showing, that they are revealing what has changed and what has remained the same. I've added that because on its without that extra bit, it would be very short for an opening uh, sentence of an answer. And we are actually analysing what has changed and what has remained the same. So it makes sense to um, add that piece of information to the sentence. So we can go back now to our key features. So we can write our overview paragraph. Here were the key features, and this is how I've put them together. Overall, the biggest difference is the number of houses that have been built along the main road and on new side roads, much of this on farmland. 
the large house has been converted into a retirement home and the primary school has also been extended. Um, so I've just neatly knitted those key points together with not too much detail but you'll note that the vocabulary is slightly different um, when compared to graphs and tables. So we've got phrases such as um, been extended, um, been built, converted into. So you do have to use a different um, type of vocabulary for describing maps. And I'll give you a table with these um, useful phrases on later in the course. Now we're going to add our details paragraphs and the first details paragraph is going to um, add details to the first key feature which I picked out which was about the number of houses and roads increasing. So this paragraph reads Originally, there were as few as 10 houses standing on the main road. However, in 2010, there were approximately 50 houses in total. Some of these houses were built on one of the four new side roads, extending off to both the east and west sides of the main road, and were built on farmland. So in this paragraph, I've added quite a few nice little details about the numbers of houses, and the number of new side roads and even the location of the roads to the east and to the west and that they were built on farmland. Now all of that information I could take from directly from the maps. I didn't make anything up. I didn't include my opinion or anything like that. It's all details that I could extract from the maps themselves. Now you might also notice <clears throat> um, that I've written that paragraph in past simple. That paragraph is written completely in past simple as it's just describing a series of events, things that had happened um, during the course of those years between 1930 and 2010. So that's in past simple. See if you can spot what tense the final details paragraphs is written in. Here it is. In 1930, the large house consisted of three buildings positioned in a horseshoe shape. By 2010, two further buildings had been added to either side of the horseshoe and the original gardens had been converted into building land. The primary school has been extended at the rear of the property and the shops previously opposite the school have been demolished although the post office has remained. <clears throat> now you may have noticed there that we've used past perfect tense for two of those sentences and we've used that because we're actually going back two steps in time. Because we started the sentence with by 2010, well, 2010 is also in the past and we're describing changes that happened before that. So that's two steps into the past. So we have to use past perfect. So that is the bit which uses had. Had plus verb three. So had been added and had been converted. So that's a great way to show off um, a range of grammatical range and accuracy there. Now, the final sentence, the primary school has been extended, <coughs> is in present perfect tense. And that is because we imagine that the primary school still has that extension now. And we imagine that the shops are still demolished now. So the outcome is still visible now. So something in the, that happened in the past with the outcome still relevant or important now, we can use present perfect. And if you notice in the second paragraph, we've also used present perfect there as well. <clears throat> 
where it says the number of houses that have been built and the large house has been converted because we those things happened in the past and we expect it is still the same way now so in those paragraphs we've got past simple we've got present perfect and we've got past perfect so a nice range of tenses to show off your ability um, is really good part of doing maps questions is that you can easily show off your range of tenses. Let's now have a look at another type of map based question. This one reads, the maps below show the centre of a small town called Islip as it is now and plans for its future development. So here we've got a map of a town centre now and a map of a town centre in the future, what it will look like after the development. So we should always pay attention to the labels and how the map is labelled. Um, so we've got in the first map we've got countryside in the north of the town centre. We've got a main road running through the middle. Um, We've got two rows of shops, a park, a school, and housing as well. Um, and in the second map, we've got, um, well, there's been a lot of changes. We've got a bus station, shopping centre, car park, new housing, pedestrian-only road, and a large road going around the town centre. So once we've read the labels, um, Obviously, the purpose of these two maps is to show what the changes are going to be. So the key features that I'm going to select for this task are um, the introduction of a dual carriageway ring road. That's a very significant change. Um, so I'm definitely going to select that as one of my biggest changes. Um, Secondly, I'm going to select one row of shops has been replaced by a variety of facilities. Um, that's a big change. And also the introduction of a pedestrian only main road. Um, and I might also mention that school and some housing south of the ring road remain, as in they haven't been removed and nothing's changed to them. Um, so as these are the key features, I can't possibly mention everything, but those are the ones that I feel are the um, going to be the biggest changes. Once again, we're going to rephrase the opening statement, and this time I've changed it to the maps illustrate how future development of Islip Town will alter its layout in years to come. So. Um, some of these phrases you can just remember and, and use again if you get a similar now and future map. Um, so the maps illustrate um, is a nice phrase to remember and also how something will alter. So it just means we'll change or we'll develop um, in the future. So we'll alter its layout is a nice phrase to remember as well. But that's our introduction done. Next we need our overview paragraph and we've got our four points so we're going to put them into a paragraph which reads like this. Overall the most significant change will be the introduction of a dual carriageway around the town and the replacing of a row of shops with a variety of facilities. There will also be a pedestrianised main road through the centre of town. That nicely sums up those key features that I picked out. Um, again, no specific details. We've kept it quite general um, with the fact that we've said a row of shops will be replaced with a variety of facilities rather than naming them individually. 
And finally, we'll add the details paragraphs. And the first one reads, the dual carriageway will encircle the entire town and will be partly built on agricultural land north of the town centre. The northernmost row of shops will be transformed into a new shopping centre complex, car park, bus station and even a housing estate. So in this paragraph I have named uh, the specific things that the shops will be converted into. I've also mentioned the detail that the dual carriageway will be built on the countryside and that it's the northernmost row of shops. So they're the types of details we should be looking to inc include. The second details paragraph reads, by the time the project is complete, the current, uh, the current main road will have been sealed off to traffic and pedestrianised completely. The school and housing towards the south of the town will have been left undisturbed, although their current access road will have become part of the ring road. The park will also remain, albeit on a smaller scale, and the nearby houses will have been redeveloped. So again, we've included details um, use, using location towards the south. Um, we've said that the uh, houses will have been redeveloped the park will remain although it'll be on a smaller scale so we've added in details but one thing you might have noticed is that I've used a different tense in this details paragraph in the first details paragraph and also um, the second paragraph I used will be um, on numerous occasions to talk about the future development. However, in this paragraph, I've used will have, and I followed that with verb three, which is future perfect. And this is a great opportunity for you to use the future perfect tense when you talk about maps. Um, so because I started the paragraph with by the time the project is complete, um, that means I can then go on to use future perfect. Um, you could have um, whatever the year of the map in the future will be. So it could be by the time, um, by 2020 or by 2025, whatever year they've got the completion of the map in the future from, you could use that and then follow it with uh, present perfect. And present perfect just emphasizes that these things will be complete by the time mentioned. Um, so obviously this is not a grammar course, but um, it's a great opportunity to use a different tense here. Um, so that's how to construct your answer for a maps question which is about now and the future. We also need to cover some useful vocabulary for maps. Now here is a list of words that you need to know. These words are all different, they have different meanings. Um, some of them are similar, but not exactly the same. So if you don't know these words, you need to go away, look up the meanings in dictionaries, look on the internet, uh, make notes about them and see how they are actually used in real life. Um, you'll need these words to effectively describe changes in the maps. And there's a few example sentences below using the words. So the first sentence is, the local council has extended the primary school. Now, this sentence is uses the word extended, um, and it's actually using what we call the active voice. It starts with the person who has done the action. So it says, the local council has extended the primary school. Now, when we're writing 
in an academic fashion and to describe changes to buildings, it's more common to write it this way. The primary school has been extended. We don't say why, we don't say who has done it, we just say the primary school has been extended. This is called passive voice and it's uh, another technique that you should try and use if you don't know it already uh, when you write your answers. So a few more examples. The post office has been demolished. The town centre has been modernised. The block of flats has been knocked down. They are all passive voice sentences and you should try and write your uh, sentences in this way uh, too. Um, if you don't know what passive voice is or you want to learn more about it, there's some excellent uh, exercises online. Simply Google passive voice uh, exercises and you'll find lots of them.
And finally for this video, I'm going to give you some useful vocabulary for describing the location of things on maps. So there's a few example sentences here. Um, university to the southeast was knocked down and a new one built to the east of the airport. The housing estate to the northwest of the town was redeveloped as an old people's home. The building to the south of the river was demolished. The flats in the southwest of the city were demolished. The park in the center of the town was relocated to the northeast of the post office. And a museum was built to the north of the airport. So usually on your maps you will have a north, south, east, west compass. So it makes sense to use um, those to help you uh, to give locations of things on the map. Uh, however, you should also be confident using the regular prepositions of place such as beside, um, beside to, uh, next to, in, on and by to describe the locations of buildings and places as well. So a combination of both styles normally works well. And that uh, therefore concludes this video on maps. So we've looked at how to uh, describe changes between different maps. And we've looked at some vocabulary you might want to use, some different types of sentence structure you might want to use, active and passive. And finally, uh, language for describing location. The only thing left is for you to uh, try some of these questions for yourself. Okay, that's the end of this video.